seriously this dress has been giving me such a good vibe and i posted it on my youtube short you guys your comment could not let me rest you know i have to go straight to the point to start making this tutorial so if you're seeing my channel for the first time you are welcome my name is jelly rag so on today's tutorial we are going to be making the pattern we are going to be first drafting a pattern for this pant you saw so here are the things that we are going to be needing to draft our pattern my fabric uh, my paper scissors my two of my marker pen my tape roll to take my measurement my french cuff this is multi-purpose and of course my pattern paper so on my hand i have my uh, book that i usually uh, draw down on my things that i want to make use of so this is the rough sketch for the pants that i drew please don't laugh at it it just it just to let you guys know what is happening right so on this side is the rough sketch for this uh, shirt but we're not making the shirt on now we're only focusing on the pants and the sewing okay the pattern drafting and the sewing so this is the measurement you'll be needing i'm going to be leaving the measurement also on the screen so that you will see clearly but here is what i wrote on the book okay uh the waist measurement the from the waist to the hip line the hip circumference and the waist to the hip uh, crouch length waist to the knee line and waist to the trouser length right so right here i have my waistline my waist is 28 from my waist to my hip line is 8 inches from my waist to my crouch line is 10.5 from my waist to my knee line is 19 inches from my waist to my trouser length is 40 inches but i wrote 39 here but i later made it 40 inches because my trouser length is 40 inches okay so please take your measurement and be sure of your measurement before you start okay so we are going to be drafting the both the front and the back pattern together so i kept allowances of three inches here because i'm going to be drafting my front pattern and my back pattern together so if you're on a bigger size keep allowances at least of four inches okay four to five inches to be on the safe side so from the waistline i'm going to be keeping allowances of two inches because the uh, my back pattern i'm going to be raising the back with the one, uh, one inch okay from the waist i'm going to raise it up with one inches okay that's one inch so that is why i'm marking two inches here for um yeah for allowances also just like i kept allowances of three inches by the side i also kept two inches from the upper part like yeah which is going to become my waist uh waistline so right now i'm drawing out this line here to create my waistline okay so the next thing we're going to be doing now okay i'm going to start by imputing my measurement my waistline is two inches so i'm going to be marking away that two inches okay i'm going to place two inches above this line let me extend this line out so i'm going to extend this line so now this is how you're going to calculate your crouch length okay the measurement is on the screen you're going to calculate your right hip circumference divided by four uh, then you're going to add uh, 0 0.75 okay so i'm going to place my tape two inches above and then i'm going to uh, mark my 10.5 inches here that is my crouch extension okay I'm going to repeat this measurement sorry my crouch length okay i'm going to repeat the measurement and i'm going to draw it also i'm going to level this part my crouch line and my waistline okay same thing i'm going to do again i need to take my new measurement i place my tape two inches above and then i'm going to mark my new line which is 19 inches okay but from my waist to my knee line is 19 inches so i'm still going to repeat the same measurement again so that we'll have accurate line so next is going to be my trouser length which is 40 inches like i said earlier okay i'm going to place my tape from my waist two inches above then take my 
trouser measurement which is 40 inches okay i'm going to repeat the same measurement so i can have a accurate line this is if you know me i always do this okay good so i need to level my new line and my trouser length so now that i've done taking all my vertical measurement the next thing now we're going to start imputing my horizontal measurement which is my my round hip circumference divided by four is 9.75 okay i'm going to mark it there at that 9.75 but approximate it on this very one here to 10 inches so i'm still going to place that 10 inches there i'm going to mark it there on my waistline but there's something i'm going to do to my waistline okay so this trouser doesn't have that so we are going to eliminate the dart from the waist okay so by doing that i'm going to minus uh 1.125 from this point here okay i'm going to mark 1.125 inches away to eliminate the dart okay if you don't want to have that to your trouser mark 1.125 let me zoom it so that you see mark 1.125 away so sorry while i was showing you guys while i zoom in i forgot to zoom it backwards to fit to the screen so you guys could not see what i actually did here but i'm still going to explain to you what i actually did okay i mark eight inches i place my tape from my waistline i mark eight inches for my from the waist to my hip line okay so now let me show you what i did from the part that i did not show okay i place my tape two inches above and then i mark eight uh eight inches for my hip line okay i repeat the same measurement from that part also eight inches so and then i draw out the line and also i level the part so i'm going to use my french curve now to connect my make my curve just like that okay so i haven't had my sewing allowance yet so i'm going to do that later not now what we are going to work in now how to calculate your your crouch extension your front crouch extension and the measurement is on the screen okay i'm going to be dividing i divide my round hip circumference by 20 it was 1.9 and i approximate it to two inches so that is two inches i mark there i mark two inches there so i'm going to get my french cuff ruler and i'm going to connect it like that please take note don't make your cuff too curvy because if you do that you're going to have excess on your ties part okay so now i need to find out the distance between the width of this part and i got 12 inches exactly so i'm going to divide it by two which is going to become six okay so this this line now is going to i'm going to use it to create uh uh let's say a crease part yeah or rather to get the a straight line oh whatever it is i hope you understand this and again for those of you who are be wondering or you may be worried about your tie measurement so right now this is my tie measurement and the crush line that same place this is where you get your uh, your tie line okay so don't worry about if you take your measurement and you find out that your crouch length is not um is not complete don't worry the back the back uh pattern is going to cover up for your for your tie measurement okay so um repeating this uh, six inches here all the way down so that i can have an uh, accurate line over this part okay so i'm going to mark it like this and once i'm done i'm going to get my uh my french curve ruler and i'm going to connect this line all the way down to the mid uh, to the bottom part or to the hemming part of my trouser so now that i have done drawing out this uh, center line i'm going to be working on the um my inseam okay so the width of my pant i'm going to be minus out of the six inches that i mark 
I'm going to minus uh, 0 0.5 by the side and also I'm going to mark 5.5 on the other side okay so uh, that same measurement I'm going to repeat it on my uh, from the bottom part of my leg to my pants or my pants opening rather I'm marking 5.5 on both sides and then I'm going to place my my French cover line like you see me doing okay and I'm going to connect it so if you have this kind of uh, French cuff roller, use it or you can, if you are very good with your free hand, use your free hand so that you can connect your pants, okay? So at this point, I'm going to place my French cuff like you see me doing and then I'm going to connect it to my knee line. Then I'm going to get my, my straight, uh, I'm going to first of all connect this part first, then I'm going to get my, my long roller to connect it from the inseam like that so basically this is the front pattern from the waist I'm going to be dropping the waist by 0 0.5 inch from the center front okay I'm dropping the center front with 0 0.5 inch the back I'm going to be raising my back pattern from the center uh, back of my back pattern I'm going to raise it with one inch remember okay so once I'm done I connect it from that this point down okay to where I drop down with 0 0.5 so the next we are going to be working on the back pattern so uh, I'm going to extend this line out so that I can be able to work with this so from the center front of my front pattern I'm going to be marking uh, 0 0.75 from this point okay if you're on a bigger size you're going to be marking one inch okay if your hip is 40 if your hip is uh, 45 above mark one inch okay so once i'm done from this point i'm going to move to the waistline from this waistline i'm going to be marking two inches inward so this two inches i'm going to mark i'm creating my back pattern okay so i mark two inches inward so that i can um i'm going to connect from this point here to me to the the two inches mark that I took from the waistline, okay, just like you see me doing, all right. So this is my center back, and then the next thing now I'm going to be working on my crouch line. From my crouch line, I'm going to place my tape where I mark my zero point seven five, okay. I'm going to be taking my round hip circumference, and then I'm going to add zero point seven five for each allowance, all right. Mark your uh, your round hip circumference divided by 4 and then you're going to add 0 0.75. If you're on a bigger size, you're going to be taking 1 inches, okay? 1 inch. So now, I, not, I took the remaining measurement that I remained from this part and then I'm going to mark it right on my hip line. So for my that is my hip line, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to connect this part. I'm going to get my French cuff roller, okay? get the curvy part don't use the straight part it's going to look funny so try as much as you can so that you can blend blend it together okay so that is it for the back pattern with these allowances that we added it's going to help you with the ease movement like you can easily squat properly okay so move on to the waistline like i said earlier that i'm going to be raising my 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 back i'm going to be raising my back with one inch right from the center back i raise it up with one inch i mark one inch up just like you see me doing okay so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to place my tape slightly so that i can impute my waist measurement okay you're not going to place your tape straight place it just the way you see me doing okay um uh, and then i'm going to mark my waist measurement okay so and then the next thing I'm going to connect this point just like you see me doing. So now uh, once I'm done from the waist, I'm going to connect from this point to my hip line, okay? So yeah, that is it. So we are done from the side. I raise it up with one inch. I raise this front with 0 0.5 inch okay so don't make this mistake pay attention on this point so that you get your trouser pattern correct the way you want it to be okay 
so the next thing that i'm going to be working with now i'm going to add 0 0.5 inch ease allowance from the east uh, from the new part okay always know that the back uh your trouser back of your the uh, yeah your back pattern or your trouser pattern i don't know how to put it but yeah your front pattern is usually smaller than your back okay so i'm going to be adding uh 0 0.5 inch is allowance from the new line okay and also i'm going to do the same thing to the lower part okay so the 0 0.5 inch is not the joining allowance is is allowance okay so yeah so once i'm done i'm going to place my french curl like you see me doing to connect the back okay i'm going to use my french curl at this point to connect this line all the way down then i'm going to get my my long ruler and place it at this edge here to connect the inseam okay i'm going to connect it from the the, the length to the nail line so this is basically the back i'm almost done there are still some few alteration to be made okay so the to get your back crash extension i'm going to leave the measurement on the screen so once you have done calculating yours whatever thing that gives you then you're going to mark it at this point okay see the place where i place my my tape okay i approximate mine to four inch initially is 3.9 so i approximate it to four inches okay so on this point let me repeat it again so that you see my tape is is marked from this red line okay my tape is being placed from this red mark not from the center front pattern okay it is the center back the red line that is where i placed my tape and then i mark the four inches right there okay so i'm going to get my french cuff roller now and then i'm going to extend this line outward Okay, so that I will know where I'm working on. So the next thing now I'm doing, once I'm done with this marking, I'm going to get my French curve ruler and then I'm going to place it just like the way you see me doing. Place, when you're making your curve, okay, don't place it on a deep part, okay? Place it on a shallow part so that when you're done, you will not have that rouge on the tie or have some gather on your tie, okay? So you see the way i place my tape and see the way uh, my french and you see the way i connect it i didn't make it deeper rather i made it shallow okay that being said for here so i'm going to place my french cup ruler like you see me doing again at the front there to connect it to me to the point where i mark that 0 0.5 inch for the new line okay i hope you're understanding my explanation i hope um you're getting what i'm saying okay so if you don't please you can rewatch it again or you leave your comment below if there is anything that you didn't understand okay so right now i'm done from the back pattern so i have placed uh, another fresh pattern underneath my pattern okay so i'm going to start by tracing i'm going to be tracing the front pattern so i'm tracing out the front pattern so that i can get out my front pattern separate then before i will start cutting out the back pattern okay so guys i'm done tracing out my front pattern so this is my front pattern i have also gone ahead to uh trace trace the line out so that it can be visible so this is my back pattern i'm going to be working on my back pattern so my tie line i don't have to worry about my tie line because the back the back pattern cover up my back on my tie okay if you have been wondering about your tie and you feel like it's not going to be enough don't worry your back pattern with the east allowance you're going to be adding is going to cover up because so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to be adding my sewing allowance which is 0 0.5 inch from the inseam the inseam is usually 0 0.5 inch okay then the side is uh one inch so i'm going to be taking the measurement from my uh my zip because i'm going to be adding zip to my back okay my zip i always put zip on my back uh pant i don't like putting zip at the front or the side okay so i place my tape or uh, 
two inches above that is uh, 0 uh, 1.5 inch above from my band and then I mark the length of my zip okay so that is what I did and then I mark one inch for my zip allowance okay the zip usually have one inch zip allowance so that is my zip allowance I just added so when I'm going to be cutting it on the uh, fabric I'm going to cut it just the way you see so right now I'm adding a uh, joining allowance from the from the crouch part just the way you see in okay see that cuff part I'm adding 0 0.5 inch for joining allowance and then the part where the zip is is one inch okay so basically this is the back pattern I'm going to be adding my allowances round the side is one inch okay one inch from the side and uh, 0 0.5 inch from the waistline all the way down and then from my hemming allowance hemming uh, that yes yeah, the bottom part i'm going to be adding allowances of two inches okay the allowance is going to be two inches for folding of my trouser yeah basically that is it So once I'm done, I'm going to uh, start cutting. But first of all, this is the back pattern. So what I did to the back, I also did the same thing to the front. So uh, as you can see, I I wrote something on the on the pattern, right? So I indicate that my I added one inch for the sewing allowance from the side, and I also zero point five inch for the inseam. Okay. So from the the hemming allowance or for the fold i added two inches okay and then from my zip is one inch for the zip allowance okay basically this is it so this is the front i'm going to start now by cutting it out okay So the back and the front pattern are ready so the next now we are going to start by cutting the fabric so this is the fabric i'm going to be working with okay this is my fabric scissors and here is my fabric that i'm going to be using this is crepe and it's not stretchy okay this is not the stretchy part i actually i would have loved to use the stretchy one but this is what i have available in the shop so i couldn't go to the market because of 
uh, transportation and stuff like that. So I have to manage the one I have here. But I will definitely going to use that particular material that I wanted to use initially. Okay. So this is my back pattern and my front pattern. I'm going to start by cutting them so that we can start doing the necessary thing we need. Okay. Let me keep this one aside. So as you can see, I have uh, gone ahead to cut the, the, the fabric to fit with my pattern because if I want to place this the whole of the fabric because this is two yard. Okay, let me not forget. I use a two and a half yard of a uh, of the crepe material because of the waistband and also my neck my shirt collar. Okay, so if you're on a small size, two and a half yard of a uh, of fabric should be enough. And if you're bigger, let's say you go for three yard because of the the shirt and also the collar and the what they call the waistband okay so you know that this trouser doesn't have pocket so you don't need to worry about inserting pocket okay so i'm going to start now by cutting the fabric or yeah cutting out the pieces okay Oh dear, the stress to cut this pattern, to cut this fabric, more, it wasn't easy. And again, my scissors was not sharp. As you can see, I brought out all my scissors that I have available just to have a fresh cord, but still it was actually stressing me up. So I have to go to this way like you see me doing to start uh, marking I use my chalk to mark it so that I can be able to have a a proper cutting. Okay, so it was a little bit stressful to work on this uh pattern, but yeah, uh, actually I I made it. So the next thing I'm going to cut at the front. While I was cutting at the front, I I didn't know that I did not press play because I have to stop to start afresh, but I forgot that I did not press play. So I already cut out the front before I realized, but well, it's still the same thing, nothing special about it. So yeah, the next thing that we're going to do is by start to join our pattern together or join our pieces to turn it to a trouser. So, so this is my back pattern and my front pattern. Okay, they are all ready to start working on, okay? so i'm going to start by uh pinning this part you see me okay i'm going to start by pinning it so that we can head to the sewing machine to start joining it okay basically this is what you're going to do nothing serious since you're not adding pocket to your trouser it's going to be pretty simple to work with unless if you are going to add pocket boy without pocket you can get your trouser done in next 30 minutes or one hour, let's say one hour highest if there is nothing there to distract you if they didn't take your light or if you don't, if you're not hungry just stand there straight ahead in one hour time you should get your trouser made in no time so once i'm done pin this part like this i'm going to go to my sewing machine i'm going to start by joining it but before i will do so i need to mark the point where my zip is going to stop okay where i'm going to place my zip okay so i'm marking my zip allowance which is uh, one inch okay remember we kept allowances of one inch right so that is the one inch that i'm marking of right and then um, i'm going to be making a temporary stitch from this point where um my, i'm going to draw a line okay i'm going to make a temporary stitch 
I'm not stitching it completely, but I'm going to stop at the point where I want my zip to be. So I'm going to mark 0 0.5 inch also from this part, like you see me doing, then that is where my stitching is going to go through, okay? Then I need to pin it back. So once I'm done pinning it back, so let me uh, mark the point where my zip is going to stop, okay? Remember, I added 0 0.5 inch for joining my waistband to my uh, uh, trouser, right? So I'm going to be placing this tape 1.5 inch above like you see me doing, okay? And then I'm going to mark the point where my zip is going to stop. My zip length is going to be at least 8 inches. So that is where I'm going to start by joining. I'm going to backstitch at this point, okay? Then I'll take it all the way to the corner like that, okay? So, okay guys, so the same thing is going to apply to the front piece. We're going to be i'm going to be going to my sewing machine now to start by sewing it so here on my sewing machine i'm going to start with my back pieces okay So the back is ready now. Move on to the front uh, piece. I'm joining the front together. Okay. So once I'm done, I'm going to head to the overlocking machine and overlock the rough edge. So as you can see, it's all done and ready to move to the next step. So before I continue, I'm going to check my measurement. So I'm marking, imputing my hip measurement. Okay. My right hip circumference divided by four, that is what I'm marking here. And my tie measurement, okay, my tie is 24 divided by, by two is uh, 12 inches. So I'm going to mark that same thing here, okay? So so the total allowance that I remain from this side is uh, 1.5 inches from my waist. I'm imputing my waist measurement here. My waist is 27 divided by four is uh, 6.75. And that is same thing I'm doing here, okay? So if you want to have that fitted pant, no matter the excess that you add, if you're, if you're confused on how you get the accurate measurement, just repeat your measurement, impute your measurement, and then add the ease allowance that you want to add to your pant, okay? So that is exactly what I'm doing right here. So I have taken my measurement and I'm pleased with the result I have. So now I'm going to be taking all this measurement all the way down. So what I have here at the end of the day is one inch from the hemming part, while from the hip and the tie part is uh, 1.5 inches, okay? So the same thing I, I'm doing from, I did for the back, I'm also going to do the same thing to the front, okay? So I need to mark this measurement so that when I'm going to join it on my sewing machine, it's going to be easy for me to work with. So once I'm done, I'm going to place the front and the back pattern together like this, okay? I'm going to start by joining them together, okay? So that I can go back to my sewing machine and join them with the allowances that I kept, okay? So I'm done pinning both the side, okay? So now it's time to go to the machine to join it with this allowance that you see, okay? I've done joining it and the next thing I'm going to do I need to confirm this measurement first before I will overlock the side. But first of all, I'm going to be working on the inseam. Okay, I'm going to be joining the inseam first so that I can go and test it, confirm if it's okay, if I need to add allowance or if I need to reduce it before I will start join, uh, complete the whole process, okay? So let me show you how you need to uh, stitch your inseam, okay? You're going to get the part that you join together that is from the center fr uh, from the center front and the center back you're going to place it together just like you see me doing okay and you are going to pin it make sure it aligned together see that line make sure they align together so once you are satisfied with it and then you're going to start by pinning it all okay you are going to start by pinning it and once you're done pin going to head to the machine to join you with 0.5 inch allowance okay 
so right now i'm on my sewing machine now i'm going to start by joining it with 0 0.5 inch allowance or So once I'm done, I'll head to my overlocking machine. I will overlock the rough edges. So I have already overlocked the rough edges. And before I overlock it, uh, I'm going to head to test it on my body to be sure that it's going to fit proper before I overlock it. I also overlock the side. Everything is all, all ready now. So the next thing I'm going to be working on the band. So I need to take the round band, the round waist circumference, so that I can, I can get the, can know how many inches, or the, the length of the band I need to cut out. Okay. So yeah, I need to start by taking the measurement. So guys, the measurement I got is 29 inches. I'm going to be adding one inch there to fold in the edges of my band. So I'm done preparing my band. Okay, I've gone ahead to iron interfacing on my band to make it more firm. So yeah, this is how it's looking like inside. Okay. So, and the width of my band is 5 inches, okay? I'm going to be using uh, 0 0.5 inch to join it. So, on fold is 2.5 inches, okay? So, I'm going to be using 0 0.5 to join join it to my band. So, I'm going to live with 2 inches in total, okay? So, now, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by pinning, uh, join, uh, pin the band to my, uh, to my trouser or to my waist part. Just like the way you see me doing like this so that i can go back to my sewing machine to start by joining it okay so guys i have done pin down my waistband to my trouser so the next thing i'm going to head to the sewing machine to join it with 0 0.5 inch okay so right now i'm on my sewing machine and i'm going to start by joining it with 0 0.5 inch allowance and once i'm done i'm going to be joining my zip also if you want to see how i i fist zip to my trouser check on the next uh third tutorial because the second tutorial is going to be the shirt tutorial okay so the third one is going to be the uh the zip uh tutorial so if you want to know how i fit zip to my trouser check on the next swing tutorial okay So guys, I've done join my band to my trouser. So the next thing now is going to be to face the zip, okay? Like I said, the the tutorial for the zip is going to be the third video that will come in on my channel soon. So if it's something that you're interested in, just stay tuned. I will post it immediately. I post the, the shirt tutorial, okay? so i will i i don't want to fast forward this i want to make it detailed so that you can also understand exactly what i did or how it is to fit a zip to your trouser okay this is a special request from one of my uh a youtube uh student so i'm going to do that for her i don't want to rush this part so that she can be able to understand exactly what i did okay guys thank you so much for your support thank you so much for making a huge campaign for this this particular tutorial um i have fun making this dress like something i saw and i recreated so it gave me some a cool inspiration or like encourage me that i can do something when i want to do it okay if, if i like like something that 
you can do it if you want to yeah that is it so thank you so much for watching i will see you on the shirt tutorial okay bye for now see you guys soon love you guys all <laughs>